sometimes we'll need to protect a cathode because uh, there's corrosion. And not just iron, but a lot of other metals will corrode, and you don't want them to. Uh, you want to keep them safe. So what you do is put something else in there called a sacrificial anode for that to be oxidized first. And that gets sacrificed instead of your important uh, part. So uh, let me just, uh, before I show you some examples, just give you one more definition of corrosion. So again, your cathode protection is to prevent corrosion. Corrosion is the process of returning a metal to its natural state, which is an ore. So metals come as ores from the ground. So essentially corrosion equals oxidation. Sounds nice. Oh, go to your natural state. It's not nice because we don't want it in a natural state. It's useless there. So we want to get it out of its natural state. So we use things called cathode protection to protect this by a uh, sacrificial anode. Let me show you some examples. Here, these first two pictures are from a uh, tube, a uh, pipe, large pipe in China. Uh, they actually, if you see these white pieces, here's the inside of the pipe. See those white things right here? Those are actually the sacrificial anode. They stick like magnesium or aluminum in there that will be oxidized first. You're wondering, why would that be oxidized first? Well, let me show you. We'll come back to this picture in a minute. Take a look and find on our standard reduction potentials. Take a look at aluminum and magnesium. They have large negative uh, reduction potentials. Large negative reduction potentials. That means they want to be oxidized. So since these are large and negative, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. And something you didn't know before, the larger positive numbers here, the larger the number in a positive way means the more spontaneous the reduction is. The larger the negative number, the more spontaneous the oxidation. What does that mean? The reverse reaction for lithium is more spontaneous than the reverse reaction for potassium which is more spontaneous than the reverse reaction for calcium. In contrast, up at the top, we have uh, F2. This reduction is more spontaneous than that of O3, which is more spontaneous than, the, than this thiosulfate, which is more spontaneous than this hydrogen peroxide. So as you get larger and positive numbers, you're more likely to reduce. As you get larger and negative numbers, um, then you're more likely to oxidize. So you can see for a uh, sacrificial anode, we like to use magnesium or aluminum because they're easily oxidized. In fact, magnesium would be a little better. And so they, all they do is just put hunks, and, and you can see them right there, these white pieces of magnesium just sitting in there. And whenever that runs out, they just go in and put new ones in there. And that oxidizes before the pipe. So it protects the pipe from being oxidized or rusty. They also do that on the outside of the pipe. See these white bags here? The white bag, there's a bunch up there. But those white bags will oxidize first, protecting the pipe from being oxidized. When this runs out, somebody comes along and sticks a new white bag here and connects it uh, to this pipe. If you're a boater, a shipman, a seaman, then uh, on your boat, you would do the same thing. See these white blocks right here? Those are blocks of magnesium. You just stick them right, bolt them right onto your ship. It keeps your ship from oxidizing. Uh, and when it starts to run out, you just put a new one on there. Uh, your house, whether you knew it or not, has the same thing. You all have water heaters in your houses, and there is an anode rod right uh, inside your water heater. If you take a look at this picture, the top one is a brand new sacrificial anode for your water heater, and the bottom one is a used one. 
can see how it just gets eaten up, but it keeps your water heater from being used up. And if your water heater is not totally covered up at the top, there's like a hex nut at the, at the top of your water heater, and that's the top of the, this uh, pipe that goes in your water heater to protect it from rusting. So it's all over the place um, as a, a form of protection. Cathodes can also be protected by paint. Is anybody from San Francisco area? You know, the Golden Gate Bridge, how often do they paint it? Do you know? They regularly paint it. All, it's all the time being painted, and it takes about, I don't know, several months or a year to paint it. And when they finish, they start over on the other side and paint across, start over again. That's because the, the paint protects uh, the bridge from rusting, and uh, when the paint starts to wear off, they need to repaint it. So paint does the same thing. Uh, another way to protect something is called plating. Uh, for steel, steel is iron with some carbon in it. Uh, for steel, they use common plating materials like zinc. Uh, you can chrome plate zeal, uh, steel. You can tin plate it. If you put zinc in steel, does anybody know what that is? That's galvanized. So if you have galvanized nails, for example, that's zinc in your nail. And the reason they do that is the zinc oxidizes before the iron in the nail, and so it keeps your nails from rusting. Uh, zinc will oxidize first. Why is that? Let's take a look. They're like, why zinc? Why is that so random? That sounds random. Well, uh, look at our standard reduction potentials. Here's iron. Oxidation would be 0.44, so that's spontaneous. Let's look at zinc. It's 0.763. So zinc will oxidize before iron if you have both of them together. So that's why it's useful as an oxidizing agent. Okay, so that's called plating. That's actually putting it in or on uh, the uh, plating technically on top of. To put it inside is more called whenever you make an alloy. Number of reasons to make an alloy you can change the density, the weight, etc. But it also protects it. Uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel is chromium plus nickel plus steel. So if you got stainless steel silverware, for example, it's uh, alloyed with nickel and chromium to allow to protect it from rusting and allow the other ones to oxidize first. Uh, now most ships are, are made of some form of steel, of iron. Uh, and so they can be really heavy. And so the British people had this really cool idea one time. We're going to make an aluminum uh, boat. And it was called the HMS Sheffield. Go Brits. They all think of good ideas. However, there was a slight... So the nice thing about aluminum is it's really light and it's shiny, so it looked pretty. So they had a pretty boat, and it was extremely fast because it was so light. The problem is, when you look at this, find aluminum. Aluminum is right up here. It oxidizes very spontaneously, meaning the reverse reaction is extremely spontaneous. What happened, uh, the, there was a, in the Falklands War, the, a missile was shot at this HMS Sheffield, and the missile didn't go off, it just hit the boat. The explosive didn't go off, but just from the hitting the boat, that impact causes the whole boat to go up in flames. Let me show you a picture of it, that's pretty funny. <laughs> so, where another boat it just bounced off, you could have had a canoe and it would have bounced off, and it just totally went up in flames. Uh, just from this uh, non-exploding torpedo that hit it. Um, and that's because uh, 
even though it was a smart idea in some ways, it was not a smart idea as far as protecting your boat from attack. 